We thank you for all that you've done, Lord. We offer our bodies now, Lord, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, as we understand your will and your way in our lives. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to start by reading the passage in Acts chapter 3. I'm not going to start preaching yet, but we'll just read through this real quick, all right? I don't think there's anyone to put the scriptures up, so just follow along. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time for prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried up, who was placed at the temple gate called the beautiful, the beautiful gate every day so he could beg for money from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple courts, he asked them for money. Peter looked directly at him, as did John, and said, look at us. So the lame man paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from him. You expecting to receive something today? Come on. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, stand up and walk. Yes. Then Peter took hold of him by the right hand and raised him up. And at once the man's feet and ankles were made strong. He jumped up, stood, began walking around, and he en entered the temple courts with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Praising God. Hallelujah. 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 All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the man who used to sit and ask for donations at the beautiful gates of the temple. And they were filled with astonishment and amazement at what had happened to him. Hallelujah. Amen. He knows our God is a miracle worker. That's He's right. here to heal us and heal our lands. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rosalind and Richard are going to lead you in some praise and worship here. Amen. Take this time just to worship God, just to seek Him, to get understanding and how to conquer the situations in your life, how to get victory. God is a God that doesn't leave us bound in chain, but He That's gives right. us victory. Hallelujah. Let's receive our victory today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Such a powerful word. I'm going to ask everyone if you would rise to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing. We're going to raise our hands. We're going to praise the almighty God who is creator and who is healer. If you need a healing today, hallelujah, expect a healing for your body. If you believe it, receive it in the name of Jesus. The word of God says by his stripes, we were healed. Declare that decree. If you need a healing, you are healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Rise to your feet and give God. God some praise because he's worthy of all glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you know this song, just sing with us. Amen. You are holy, Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing worth more. Sweetest of loves, where my 
Hallelujah. I'm just glad that God has given us the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The amazing power of the Holy Spirit can live and work through us, in us. Amen. He wants to do something. Listen, God has called you all. But he hasn't called the person that's sitting here today. He's called you to be something. He's called you to be something more than you are right now. He's called you to be in his ministry. He's called you to do his works. Amen. When you get to heaven, he will say, I knew you or I did not know you. And it's not because he doesn't know your name. He knows you as a sinner. Hallelujah. But he needs to know you as the one he has called. Hallelujah. He knows you by your, your obedience. Hallelujah. It was obedience and faith that counted on to Abraham as righteousness and allowed him into paradise. Hallelujah. We're going to pick up right where we left off in chapter 3 of Acts. We're going to start at verse 11. And after this miracle, we see that God is doing a great thing by giving his Holy Spirit. This is the first ministry that happens, hallelujah, after the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. After receiving that which was promised to them. Why? Because they obeyed. Why? Because they had patience. Hallelujah. It takes obedience and patience to receive what God has for you. You have to understand that you don't understand what he's doing. You have to understand that his ways are higher than your ways. You have to understand when he speaks, it must happen. Hallelujah. There's not another alternative. It doesn't matter that it took longer than you thought. It doesn't matter that it didn't come the way you thought it would. Let me tell you, when he speaks, it will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. While the man was hanging on to Peter and John... Wore himself out with all this praising and shouting. Come on. This man had not used the muscles in his legs for years, and yet the first thing he did was give them glory to God. He used every strength that he received in that moment to give glory to God because he knew that the power of Jesus Christ was real, that Jesus Christ was the Word of God made flesh and manifest to live among us and teach us all that we need. Hallelujah. If we would obey the teachings of Christ, we could walk in the power that he has given us and the authority he has given us given us. Hallelujah. Stop looking to others to do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah, church. While the man was hanging on to Peter and John, all the people, completely astonished, ran together to them in the covered walkway called Solomon's Porchico. Hallelujah. And I pronounced that wrong and I'm not going to apologize for it. Amen. Hallelujah. It is a covered walkway. That's what we need to know. Hallelujah. It had a name. It was known. This is where they gathered to talk. Hallelujah. When Peter saw this, he declared the people, men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? So amazed at the the work of a single healing, but not the work and testimony of Jesus Christ and his three and a half years of ministry. Oh, come on. We got to get it back to Jesus. We got to get it back to his teachings. We got to get it back to the main point. Hallelujah. You need to seek the Christ that was delivered. Hallelujah. You need to have fellowship with him through the Holy Spirit. Why are you amazed at this? Why do you stare at us as if we had made this man walk by our own power or piety? Come on. It's not by who I am. It's not by. mm. Come on. It's not because of who I am. It's not because of what I've done. It's because of who Jesus is. It's about what he did. Hallelujah. If we can take our mind and see the Christ that is present. Hallelujah. Instead of the person that's being the representation of Christ. We can start to receive what God has for us. God has a word for his people. His word is not dead. It is life changing, life altering. If you'll just take the single word of God and write it on the tablet of your heart where no man can take it from you. Let me tell you, there is no burden. There is no sickness. There is no famine. There is no war. There is no disease that will separate you from his love. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When the enemy gives you a bad report, know that it is not a report against you. It is a report against your God because I am no longer my own. Hallelujah. I was bought with a price. This body doesn't belong to me. I offered it to God as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Lord, you got to clean it up and do what needs to be done. I brought you a body that wasn't spotless. I bought you a body that wasn't worthy, but you said you would take it anyway. Hallelujah, Lord. You said you would wipe it away on the rocoche. Getting a little ahead of my message. All right, come on, church. How many had a transformation when God saved you from your wicked ways? Come on. How many changed their life because of a word of God spoken to you? How many got the power of the Holy Ghost and couldn't wait to see what God was going to do next? Come on. Are we expecting God to do something through us, for us, hallelujah, for his church, for his people, hallelujah, those that would stand up in the face of oppression? Come on, church. The church is finally facing a little opposition, and we're cowering and compromising. Instead of saying, no, we are the authority on this. Your experts aren't the authority. My God in heaven created this. He is the authority on all that happens on earth, hallelujah. I give God all power and judgment over my life and I deny man's power on my life I deny the works of the devil on my life Oh, come on receive this hallelujah the world is not supposed to be dictating how you live you are a blood bought born again believer of, uh, of Jesus Christ the Nazarene hallelujah the God that walked among us. Not a man, not a prophet, but the God that walked among us. Know who Jesus was. Hallelujah. Know who Jesus is. Verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. And the God of our forefathers has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate after he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked that a man who was a murderer be released to you. Come on. Let's know what we've done, church. Let's know what we've done. Let's know that when we sin, we sin against God directly. Come on. Let's keep ourselves accountable. Let's repent quickly. Ask for forgiveness quickly. If we ask quickly, he is, come on, he is quick to forgive. Come on. Say, I can't do it because I'm not perfect. No, you're, you're not perfect. He doesn't use perfect people. He used a perfect person to be our representation. He asked you to be humble. He asked you not to defend your sin. He asked you to say, Lord, you have to take it. It is yours and only you can forgive it. Come on, when we give it back to him, it's no longer our burden. It's no longer our punishment. It is his to deal with. Hallelujah. And he will correct your ways and he will lead you into paths that are not temptation. He will lead you into paths that are green pastures. He will lead you into paths where his power is present and working. Hallelujah. You killed the originator of life. Whom God raised from the dead. You killed the human God. But the God in heaven, who he still prayed to, the Father in heaven, said death had no claim on this body. Come on. He didn't need a representation to go lay hands. He didn't need someone to speak the word, come forth. Why? Because death had no claim to him. Come on. This is the authority and the power that God has given us as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Come on. Why does death have a claim on your life? Where did it get its power? Where did it get its authority? Already get this deep tonight? Come on. Yeah, we speak it. We give it authority. But let me tell you, the authority of Jesus Christ, give it back to him. Let him be the leader of your life. He does not speak death. Every word that proceeded from the mouth of God was life. 
He didn't speak cursings. He came to bless the people of God. Hallelujah. His mouth was not bitter and sweet. It was a sweet fountain. Hallelujah. Let's, let's hold ourselves accountable, church. Let's stop speaking the things of the world. Let's stop speaking cursings. Let's stop speaking about the destruction. And let's start talking about the power of God. Do you not think God is rising up when sin is rising? Does it not tell us in the word that where sin abounds, grace does abound that much more? Come on. If Satan is doing a work in our nation, then God is doing a greater work. If Satan is doing a work in your family, God is doing a greater work. If Satan is doing a work in your life, God is doing a greater work. Hallelujah. Come on. Someone need to hear that today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His grace is greater. Hallelujah. He bought, brought us the fivefold ministry. Why five? Because five is the number for grace. Hallelujah. He brought us the ministry of grace. And he brought us five aspects of grace to go with it. Hallelujah. Come on. All right. We're going to stay on the message today. And on the basis of faith in Jesus, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. see something go wrong pastor linda's first words are gonna be jesus hallelujah not in a bad way hallelujah but crying out from the depths of her heart because she knows the only one that ever saved her she knows the only one that's always dependable she knows the one who will conquer the situation she doesn't know how to handle she calls on the name of jesus because in that moment there's no other name that comes to mind she doesn't call out for her husband she doesn't call out for her son she calls out for the savior come on church let's get back to calling out for the savior Hallelujah. When you see the bad news, call out to the Savior. Don't talk about the bad news. Talk about the good news. Hallelujah. He called us to share the gospel. Hallelujah. The gospel means the good news. Hallelujah. Let's start living like he taught us to live. When we speak like he taught us to speak. Hallelujah. When we walk like he taught us to walk, we will walk in the authority to heal the sick. We will walk in the authority to cast out demons. Let me tell you, God would not have put those words in the mouth of Jesus Christ if he did not mean for us to continue to do it. Are the demons gone? Were they all banished? Come on. We don't, we don't do this anymore. We don't do the things that the Bible, that the Christ told us to do. We put them back and call them silly. Say, oh, that's, that's psychology. That's mental disorders. Look, there's other ways that men can treat it, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to go forth and say, you need to go see a psychologist. I'm going to go forth and say, the one who I know can heal your brain, can heal your body, can heal your spirit, can heal your soul in a way I don't even understand, but I know it's true and I know it's powerful. I know that my God can heal the lame from birth, that medical technology can't. I know my God can open the blind eyes of those that were born without sight hallelujah come on let's start to realize who our god is and what he's been doing for two thousand years hallelujah and stop getting so amazed by what we see technology do today our god's been doing it longer and better for a long time hallelujah hallelujah And on the basis of faith in Jesus' name, his very name has made this man just the name of Jesus. Come on, there's power in the name. Come on, you used to know it. Do you still know it today? You did run well. What did hinder you, church? Come on. Come on, let's... Let's humble ourselves and get back to doing what God called us to do. Let's stop acting like we're so far ahead of God. Come on. We're way behind him. Let's see him because he's a bright light. Hallelujah. He's coming close. Come on. If you'll just dare draw close to God, he will draw close to you. It's his promise and it's his word. Hallelujah. Don't act like he's hard to find. You're not seeking him, church. Come on. 
If you seek him, you will find him. Hallelujah. His very name made this man whom you see and know strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. Hear that, wife. Hold me to it. When I wake up in the morning, I am strong. You say it, and you make sure I say it, and we're going to teach Isaac to say it. Come on, because we're going to proclaim the things that God told us to proclaim, and we're going to live the life that God told us to live. Hallelujah, and hallelujah, you are my wife, and I'm putting the burden and responsibility of accountability on you. Hallelujah. (laughs) Come on. Come on. Come on, husbands. Talk to your wife. You know, she's more responsible than you are. Come on. Humble yourself. I still call my mom when I can't find something at their house because she knows where it is, even though it's mine. Come on. This is my old room, and I don't know where anything's at, but my mother does. Huh? Come on. They have that built-in responsibility because God called them to be mothers, and mothers have to know things that men don't. Come on. It is revelation. Hallelujah. God brings it to you. God, come on. I woke up first with Isaac the other day. But as soon as he cried, mom didn't come sleepily out of bed like she does every morning. Come on. She came with a pep in her step running saying, where's my baby? Come on. This two-year-old man with this... With his grown dad, hallelujah. But no, she heard her baby cry, and she said, I was asleep and he needed me. Come on. How do you think your God responds when you cry out to him in your moment of need? He's not asleep or slumbering. Come on. He comes a running when you say, Lord, I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. Come on. God wishes for fellowship and communion with his people. Let's give it to him, church. Come on, he created the garden. He created Adam. Why? For a fellowship, for communion with man. He said, I created something good. I created something good worth redeeming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The faith that is through Jesus has given him this complete health. Come on. There's no comma there. I I paused on purpose. Come on, church. Has given this complete health in the presence of you all. Well, he could walk. No, his strength was restored. Come on. Get the full miracle. I've seen people get out of their wheelchairs and shuffle. Come on. It's a miracle. People hadn't hadn't got out of the wheelchair in forever. But that's not what happened. Because I've seen this too. I've seen them get out of the wheelchair and then start jumping. Oh, Lord Jesus. I I haven't used these legs in so long. Let me jump a little bit. Come on. See, if you only know the miracle that you just witnessed. Hallelujah. 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 Because when... Your strength is gone. You can roll over and die. Or you can say, Lord, it says when my flesh is weak, the spirit is strong. Let me draw strength not from this body, Lord. Lord, I give the body over to you. You deal with it. I'm going to walk in the spirit today. I'm not going to worry about the pains. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm going to worry about doing your will. I'm going to worry about speaking your word. I'm going to worry that I didn't please you enough today. That's my fear today, Lord Jesus. I have no other but that I didn't do enough for you. We start to live that way. You will start to see God move in your families. You will start to see God move in your communities. You will start to see the blessing of God overtake you. You will start to see the provision for the vision that God gave in your life. Hallelujah. To come into fullness and to complete the work that he started. Because God's not the one giving up. You are. God started a work in each and every one of us. Come on. 
Let's complete the work. Let's work with him. It's his job to complete it. It's your job to submit and obey. Do you have faith that the way that God is leading you is the best path for your life? Or do you think your path is better? Come on. Because before the Holy Spirit, Peter, before the resurrection, Peter didn't think of Jesus as the one who was called. He said he was, but come on, he wouldn't have went back to fishing. But when he saw him raised from the dead, when he received the Holy Spirit, he wasn't a fisherman anymore. Come on, church. God called you for ministry. God called you for a purpose. God called you and said, let me be your everything. Let me be your provider. Submit and obey to God. You think God doesn't have enough to give you? You think God will not heal you? You think God will not save you? He's done all these things already, has he not? Verse 17. And now, brothers, I know you acted in ignorance, as your rulers did too. Verse 18, see, I want those exciting starting words that I like so much in the Bible. Because you know things are about to change. So you, you killed the creator. You killed the origin of life. But death had no claim on it. Death could not hold it. The chains that tried to hold him in the grave had no way to be because he was the chain breaker. So they never held him down. Hallelujah. It doesn't say, oh, come on. It doesn't say he was bound to the grave for three days. It says he went and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave in those three days. Come on, he wasn't. Mm. That's why there's a but. Hallelujah. But the things God foretold long ago through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. He has fulfilled it in this way. As long as you say, well, the suffering, well, that doesn't look fun. Why are the Christians suffering? He says, when you suffer, you get to join me in my glorious suffering. Don't let your body be affected by the suffering. Rise above it. Rise above it. Separate your spirit and your body. Your, your body has been given as a living sacrifice. It says, crucify your flesh daily. Come on. You spend so much time working on the flesh, catering to it. It's, it's stealing the time for you to live your spiritual life, which you were called to. And trust me, God will take better care of your flesh than you ever could. Start trusting God with more aspects of our life. Come on, church. Every prophecy of the Old Testament, every prophecy of the past prophets, hallelujah. He didn't skip one. He didn't say, this one's too much, I don't want to go through it. He said, I need to make it happen. I need the inconvenience. I need to do what I'm doing. Your friend is sick, Jesus. Go heal him real quick. I have a work to do. Don't worry, he's just asleep. Come on. He said, you're going to make me say the word that I don't speak? Come on. Come on. He didn't want to say it. He said, he's asleep. He's asleep. Understand what I'm saying. So many people want you to say the thing that you're trying to avoid. Come on, let's raise our faith and be on the same page and learn the same jargon that Jesus is learning. Come on. Because when he's asleep, there's faith to wake up. He said, don't worry, I'll reveal who I really am. I was going to wake him from his slumber, but now I will show you I am the resurrection. He had to change what he was doing. Come on. He said, don't worry, I'm the resurrection. And just like on the day of the rapture, let me show you. Come forth. That was it. Come on. Lazarus. Larry, come forth. Come on. 
Because when that spirit man reacts, come on. We put so much emphasis on the flesh man, but the flesh man isn't keeping you alive. It says we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I can't live on food alone. If I don't have the breath that I need, the spirit of God, the breath that I need, the very thing I'm breathing in, come on. When you breathe in, you're saying, yod hey. When you breathe out, you're saying, what, hey, come on, church. You're speaking the name of God with your very first breath. And the very last breath that you speak before you die, you will whisper his name. Come on. That's how you pronounce it. Come on. Just take a moment and listen to your breath. I'm crying out to God with every breath. Come on. Make it purposeful. Know what you're doing. It's in our ignorance that we do the... Don't worry. In your ignorance, you'll still fulfill the word of God. In their ignorance, they crucified Christ. They fulfilled prophecy. Come on. But let's not stay ignorant. The word tells us, I would not have you ignorant of the devil's devices. Therefore... Repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out. It's a time of repentance. It's a time of turning back to God. This nation will see revival when people fall on their knees and say, I'm a sinner and I'm going down a wicked way. But Lord, I give it up for you. That's all it takes. That's all it's ever taken. Say, I won't follow any truth but the truth of you. Y'all weren't ready for that one. All right. Therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out. So that times of refreshing. Come on. What's coming next? Times of refreshing may come. What does it take to get to times? We always want the times of refreshing. We're always seeking those, but we're forgetting the step before it. So I've been a Christian for 30 years. You're not perfect. Get on your knees. Show them how it's done. If you can't think of something to repent for, that's all right. Repent for the things you're breaking that you don't know you're breaking. Say, Lord, I know I'm not living a perfect will. I know I'm doing things that that it caused my life to be easier on earth instead of following you every day of my life. Can we all say that one? Is that not a sin? To know what to do good and do it and not? Do you not know to do ministry every day and not do it? Come on, I'm guilty. I'm saying we're all guilty. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and we never stopped. Come on. I know that's not a popular teaching. People say, oh, you can't do that and be a Christian. Let me tell you, it's all about faith and forgiveness. God's not going to leave you there because he loves you. He's going to correct you, and he's going to do it not through condemnation, but through conviction in the Holy Spirit. He will lead you under righteousness through conviction. Welcome conviction because that shows how much he cares for you. Hallelujah. If he's not convicting you, you really need to fall and repent because your conscience has been seared by a hot iron. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to convict us. I don't know where this belief came that the Holy Spirit is going to stop convicting you one day. You can be saved from the time you born to the time you die. He will convict you the whole way through. Give everything. He convicted you. Come on. He convicted Jesus. Not because he was a sinner, but because he had a mission to do. He convicted him. He led him into the wilderness to fast for 40 days. He convicted him to do the prophecies that were meant for him to fulfill. He doesn't just convict you when you're doing wrong. He convicts you so that you can do right. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak and convict us and lead us in the ways to go. Only he knows the path for you. Only he knows the way. You've never been there. You don't know where you're going. Stop acting like you do. Oh, come on, church. I'm... Am I saying it harder than you mean it, Lord? I'm sorry. My, my words might not be doing it justice. God is a God of patience. God is a God of grace. He's not going to give up on you. You didn't take too long 
Your son, your daughter is not too far gone. Come on. Have patience. Don't stop. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Come on. Come on, prayer warriors. Where you been? Where you been? Come on. Not routine. Break out of the routine and be led by the Spirit of God. Come on. We're not trying to order this. We're trying to follow it. Every time God starts to do something, man tries to make a, a path out of it. Come on. Let's follow the leading of the Spirit. That's how you unify. It's not by following a written path unless it's this written path. There's no religion that's got it right. They all ruin it. Amen. Sorry, y'all. Because when man interjects his wisdom, his understanding, his ways, his motivation for profit, his motivation for control, come on, you ruin the, the pure truth of the word of God. You ruin the pure relationship that God has offered us. He's offered us a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Come on, church. We don't even take advantage of it. How many times do you go and say, I'm not going to move till I hear the voice of God tell me where to go? Joshua said it. Joshua knew where he was supposed to be, but he said, I won't go there unless you go with me. We don't make statements like that anymore. I know y'all. You might have once in your life. Why'd you stop? That's what it's saying. You were running so well. What hindered you? What's slowing us down? What are we allowing into our brains? What are we allowing to feed on that is not promoting the goodness and the glory of God? <laughs> it's only one thing, though. Come on. We do it with a lot of things, don't we? focus so much on the things of this world. We focus so much on loving this life that we will lose it. But it says, if you lose this life for my name's sake, you will gain eternity. Come on. Let's start laying it down, church. Let's start realizing how important the work that God gave us to do is. When we lead, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, He will unify us all. It is God who is the unifier. He created every person. He put a soul inside of each and every one of us. He revived our, Holy, our spirit with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Let's begin to walk in it. Let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to understand who he is. Let's seek him, and he will seek us. If we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. Come on. It's his word. It's his promise. It is always true. If you feel like God is far off, then you're not seeking him. It's all right to feel that way. It's not all right not to do something about it. Lord, I don't feel your presence today. Where are you? Can you answer that and not hear from God? Can you ask that question and not hear from God? I heard immediately in my spirit, I am here. There's a wasn't a real question because I feel his presence. I know he's here. Hallelujah. But that's how quickly he answers. And when I don't feel his presence, it's not any longer. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. He's with you. He's waiting for your invitation. He's waiting for you to talk to him, to communicate with him. That's what you were created to do, to communicate with God. We learn his ways through his word, but we learn who he is through prayer and meditation and hearing his voice, quieting ourselves, quieting our needs, restricting everything else. Come on. Sometimes we, we blot out the word of God, the voice of God in our lives with praise music. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but let me tell you, when it's time to get still and quiet before the Lord, there's nothing else you're bringing in. Listen to him. 
I said, oh, the song spoke to me. Well, how about the voice of God speaking to you? Let's get alone in the quiet place. We've neglected the quiet place of prayer for too long, church. Let's get back to our prayer closets. Let's get back to gathering your family around and praying for the day. Come on, church. Let's get back to taking the day because I don't know about you, but I want my Monday to be created by the Lord. I don't want my Monday to be created by man, by government, by nature. All these things would try to exalt themselves against my God. No, my day is created by the Lord, and I will be glad and rejoice in it. So that times of refreshing may come. Where does it come from? It comes from the presence of the Lord. And so that you may send the Messiah appointed for you. That is Jesus. Hallelujah. This one from heaven, this one heaven, must receive until the time all things are restored. Which God declared from times long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. Those next three words are a little rough. (laughs) You must obey. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. There's no sacrifice you can give that will replace obedience to the voice of God, replace obedience to the teachings of God. Hallelujah. You must obey him in everything he tells you. Let's get back to the teachings of the Christ that walked among us. Let's get back to following those teachings. Let's get back to the basics of Jesus Christ. And it's not basic, it's the deepest revelation we've ever had of God. It was revealing his face to all humanity when he tore the veil and allowed us to approach God as sons and daughters into his kingdom, allowed in as family, engrafted in. Come on. Yeah, I remember that pastor used to preach that message so good. Come on. The message of, of sonship, of, of daughtership, of family in heaven. You're not just anyone. You're now a king's kid. Hallelujah. You're now meant for divine things. But guess what? Being a king's kid comes with responsibility. It comes with times of preparation. Meghan Markle didn't like all the preparation it took to be part of the royal family, so they left and came to the U.S. or Canada or something. Amen. Is it Prince Andrew? I don't follow it very closely. But I I can tell you she rejected the customs that were required to be a part of that family. Come on. How many times do we as Christians reject the customs that are required to be in God's family, to be a representation of his kingdom? I'm just reading the word. Come on, church. Every person who does not obey that prophet will be fine. Oh, they'll be destroyed. So this is kind of important. This is, if I don't tell someone this, I hate them. If you won't share the gospel with a sinner, you, you don't care for them. How can you withhold salvation from someone that is going towards destruction? How can you let a child run off a cliff when you know the cliff is there and they don't? How can you let a full-grown adult run off that cliff when you know that cliff is there and they don't? Come on. This is the responsibility we're not living up to, church. This is what we're called to do. He, He gave us an easy burden. Come on. Being in the royal family in England is weird. There's a lot of weird traditions. But he said, don't worry, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. He said, go and tell them what I told you. Do what I told you. That's it. So 
said, I know you're a sinner. I paid for your sins. Don't defend your sins. Expose them to me. Expose every weakness in your life and let me give you strength for it. Come on. Sometimes people don't have the patience for that process, but let me tell you, that's a process that God uses. He changes your life. Moment by moment, line upon line, precept upon precept. Know that God's doing something you don't understand. It's easy to discredit things. But let me tell you, if you keep discrediting things, you're going to end up finding the truth. When you say, well, I'm not going to look at this, I'm not going to look, let me look at what the Spirit is doing. You'll never find a lie. You'll never find a mistake. You'll never find anything wrong. When we judge the Spirit of God instead of the Speaker of God, we'll find the truth. How do we judge the Spirit? By the Word. Every word in this book must be fulfilled. Every promise, every gift. That's If the Spirit you're following isn't doing the Word of God, you're following the wrong Spirit. Amen. Every person who does not obey that prophet will be destroyed, thus removed from the people. And all the prophets from Samuel and those who followed him have spoken about and announced these days. Come on, same spirit. Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years, they're all talking about the same thing. God's doing the same thing. Your prophets today, are they all talking about the same thing or they're doing their own thing? Come on. God's doing something. You know what God's doing? He's coming back. You know, God's doing, he's pouring out his spirit on our sons and daughters. Amen. Come on, it's the word. The word will be fulfilled. If, if you're hearing something different, you're not hearing the voice of God. God's saying, turn from your wicked ways and seek me. Cry out to me and I will heal your land. Come on. Turn from your wicked ways and I will heal your land. Come on, church. These days were announced just like the days of Christ. We're living in prophetic time, church. Verse 25. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors, saying to Abraham, and in your descendants, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Come on. This nation will be blessed because we have a covenant with the Almighty God. And as long as this is one nation under God, the blessing of God will prevail. Come on. As long as there are people that will not bow down, not compromise the gospel. Let me tell you, come on. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't take a lot to get God to change the mind. Come on. We got a lot of true Christians left in this nation. And we need to stand up and get on fire again and burn bright. Because it's time for us to burn away the things of the devil and show that God's kingdom is reigning in this nation. Hallelujah. This is the last verse of the chapter, so this will end. Hallelujah. God raised up his servant and sent him first to you to bless you by turning each one of you from your iniquities. Let's let's hear that. Come on, church. He's taking away your iniquities. That's how he's blessing you. That's where the blessing starts. Come on, church. We want to walk and live in the blessing. That's where it starts. Let him take away your pain. Let him take away your sin. Let him take away all the things that you have done to yourself. Come on that you have done against God, that you have done against other people, that other people have done against you. Come on, because forgiveness isn't a one-way street. Come on, church. We got to forgive as we are forgiven. Come on. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessing today. All right, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Richard, can you put the, the Lord's Prayer up in the King James Version?
Pastor, can you read this for me? From the screen, would that be all right? I got to see if he got his glasses. We'll check in here. All right. And by that, I meant Pastor Linda. Will you read this today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't have to read it until he's started. <laughs> it's true. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which are in heaven hallowed, be thy name. hallowed be thy name. Glorious praise unto God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The angels don't question. The angels don't talk back. Come on. God's way or you're going. Yes. Satan went a different way, so a third of the angels was come on. Come on, amen. Yep. God's rule on earth is not a democracy. God's rule on earth amen. is a covenant dictatorship. Amen. Come on. Yeah. He is in control. Yeah. He yes, he wrote is. The laws. Yes, he is. The laws aren't up for debate. They're not changeable. There's no way to amend it. He wrote it. He knew from the beginning that yeah. this was the way to live. This was the way to be blessed. Oh. Amen. Praise this God. About the Lord's Amen. This is how you pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I don't want to go without lack. Amen. Lord, I, I'm not going to provide. You provide. Amen. I will be obedient, but you are my provision. Amen. You are the place yes. I go to be provided yes. for. You are my only source, Lord Jesus. Yes. I trust in you because I know your riches in heaven are greater than anything I could find on earth. Amen. And I know that it says, as a tithe payer, you will open up the windows of heaven and Ooh. pour me out a Amen. blessing I can't Amen. contain, Lord Jesus. Amen. I thank you that my daily Seen bread it. is uncontainable Amen. in my life. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Get you upside about this prayer. Amen. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Lord Jesus, as we forgive our debtors, we are debt free now. Amen. And no one owes you a debt either. Amen. Try that again. Come on. Amen. Try that again. Come on. We are debt free. Amen. And no one owes us a debt either. Amen. We are forgiven. Yes. And we have forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's healing right there. That's healing. That's that healing is right healing. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. I don't want to go nowhere near, Lord. I'm not strong, Lord. Lord, I need your help. If temptation is present, Lord, deliver me from it. Make a way out. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. I don't know how to face it. I'm just going to run from me. <laughs> I'm just going to go the other way, Lord. I don't, I don't want to face temptation anymore. Lead me in the right direction, Lord. Amen. Lead me in the direction you call me. Yeah. Your spirit is not leading me into temptation. But deliver us from evil. That's right. It's gone. Deliver me from the evil in my life. For thine is the kingdom. It is. Hallelujah. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Amen. 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 So be it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for it. Woo. It's Thank the kingdom. You. Where do I live? I live in his kingdom. What do I possess? I possess his power. Why? Because he is glorious and I walk as a reflection of his glory on earth. Come on. As God shines. Come on. This is where we're meant to be, church. When Moses got in the presence of God, he didn't have to speak profound things. He didn't have to put on a special robe. Come on. When he left the presence of God, he looked different. He shone. Hallelujah. His face was shining. It was new. It was different. Hallelujah. The presence of God will change your very appearance. Let God change who you are. Hallelujah. That's the glory of God. Let's get to the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His kingdom is here. His kingdom has come. Come on. Let's accept that. Let's live in it so that we can get to the power and the glory. It's in order for a reason. Amen. Hallelujah. Forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that this, this word, this message will reach the heart of those that are walking away from you, Lord Jesus, sinner and believer alike, Lord Jesus. We put this word out so that they may find you again and live the life you have called them to, live in the blessing that you have made for them, Lord Jesus. Come on, Lord Jesus. I'm tired of people suffering, and your way does not lead to suffering, Lord Jesus. We put your kingdom here. There is no poor in heaven. There are no starving in heaven. There are no sick in heaven. There are no depressed in heaven, and that is the kingdom that I want here on earth, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your kingdom. And by the authority in Jesus Christ, the Nazarene's name, we call it so this day in Bowling Green, Ohio. This city is in the kingdom of God. You are welcome here. You are, you are invited here, Lord Jesus. And I thank you because this morning you spoke to me and said, I accept your invitation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, equip us. Give us your power. Let us show your glory, Lord, that our face may not be seen when we represent your kingdom, but your glory may be seen. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is your will for your people. Hallelujah. And we accept it and we will follow it. Lord, forgive us when we step wrong, but let us not stray from the path. Let it just be a step, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we are quick to get back on the right path, Lord Jesus. We thank you that there is grace for us to make mistakes, Lord Jesus. Come on, don't, don't be bound because you're afraid to make a mistake. Step out on faith. And if it's the wrong step, let God correct it. Come on, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Don't get so set in your ways that you're going to follow through on your thing and not get back on God's path. Because you said, I put too much time, I put too much effort into doing my thing that I don't have time to do God's thing. Come on, church. This is straight from the Holy Spirit. We got to get back to working for the kingdom of God and not for the kingdom of man. You must make a choice. You can't serve two masters. You serve the God of heaven in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, or you serve man in worldly possessions, worldly things. Let's make our choice this day. Who will you serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, hallelujah. We will serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you make that statement today? For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. It's powerful. Speak these things. Say them. We know them, but we need to vocalize them. We need to hear ourselves say these things because our body needs to hear what our spirit is saying. This body isn't connected to the spirit. They're different. Let the spirit speak to the body so that it acts right. Come on. My body ain't been listening to my spirit, so I had to, I had to go deep in the word. Hallelujah. I had to go deep in my prayer life. I said, this ain't right, Lord. You deal with it. I'm tired of it. I don't have the strength to deal with it. I don't have the time to deal with it. You've called me to do a work. I need to study the word. I need to go after you, Lord Jesus. I need to talk to you. I don't have time to deal with these things. You deal with the body. I'll deal with the spirit. That's what you called me to. You called me to be a spirit. You called me to serve you and worship you in spirit and truth. You didn't call me to worship you in body and truth. Hallelujah. Let's get back to spirit and truth. All right, church. I'm going to quit. Because there's no end. Hallelujah. God's word is eternal and living. It doesn't shut off. Hallelujah. I appreciate you all. If anyone wants prayer, come down to the altar. I feel the anointing today. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to our stream. However, this brings a conclusion to our service. We would like to invite everyone to help us out by making any donations as you please, as they do help us to continue our ministry. If you would like to send a gift online, Donations can be made using the donate button at our website, faithtemplebg.org, or if you would prefer to send something in the mail, all checks or money orders can be written to Faith Temple and can be mailed to the address 175 State Street in Bowling Green, Ohio, zip code 43402. We really do appreciate any and all gifts sent in. We thank you for tuning in to our stream, and we hope to catch you on the next one. We love you, and God bless.